Hi everyone, it's Professor Primington. In this video, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. So most of the equations that we've dealt so far in the class can be described as an equation of this form, where you have y equals f of x, and it's where y is explicitly in terms of the independent variable x. So y was called the dependent variable, x is called the independent variable, and y has been solved for, and so we could call the function f of x. In other words, whenever you can solve for y in terms of x with a unique solution, then we say that y is explicitly defined in terms of x. So here are a couple examples relating the variables x and y, which can either be difficult or nearly impossible to solve explicitly for y, such as these equations. y plus e to the y power equals x squared. So how do you solve this equation for y when you have a y here and you also have a y in the exponent? It's very difficult to solve for y. Now this equation, x squared times y to the fifth, subtract 3 times x times y plus 5 equals 0. So you have y in this second term, but you also have y in the first term that's being raised to the fifth power. How do you solve for y? Well, it's nearly impossible to do so without a computer. In this section, we're going to differentiate equations that are called implicit. So equations that are nearly impossible to solve for y, where you can't get y by itself, so that it defines an equation in terms of x. These are what's called implicit equations. And when you find the derivative of these equations, it's what's called implicit differentiation. So in this video, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation to find derivatives of implicit equations. So let's start off with a discussion of what's called special function notation. The equation y equals 2 subtract 3x squared, that defines a function of x. So we always replace the y with function notation f of x. And so you could rewrite this as f of x is equal to 2 subtract 3x squared instead of the y. So the y is what's called the dependent variable, and x was called the independent variable. Whenever you can replace f of x with y, we say that the equation is defined explicitly for y in terms of x. However, to make this discussion a little bit easier, we want to minimize the number of symbols, and we want to write this equation. y of x is equal to 2 subtract 3x squared. So rather than using x, y, and sometimes f of x, we're just going to use y of x in this section. So y of x is how we're going to represent functions in this section y is a function of x, y is the function's name, it's the dependent variable, and x is the independent variable. Instead of writing f of x equals 2 subtract 3x squared, we're going to write y of x equals 2 minus 3x squared. What's important is that you remember that y is a function of x. So this is what's called an explicit equation because we can get y by itself on one side of the equation. So y has been solved for. So now that we've talked about special function notation where instead of using f of x, we're going to use y, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. Let's look at the equation 3x squared plus y subtract 2 equals 0. This is an example of an implicit equation because the equation does not define y explicitly in terms of x. So notice that the equation is not solved for y. So an equation of this form is what's called an implicit equation. If you want to find the derivative of this equation, you need to use what's called implicit differentiation. So this is a very important note for this section involving implicit differentiation. Whenever you are performing implicit differentiation, you must keep in mind that the dependent variable y represents a function of an independent variable x. So you don't know what the function y is, you just know that y is a function and it's in terms of x. What that means is that every time that you take a derivative of y with respect to the independent variable x, you must also multiply by the chain rule, which is y prime. So remember from the previous video, we talked about the chain rule and that the chain rule is the derivative of the outside function and it's also the derivative of the inside function. You multiply the two derivatives together. If we take the derivative of the inside function, we need to take the derivative with respect to x. Well, y is a function now. It's not just representing a variable, it's representing a function of x. Even though you don't know what y is in terms of the function, you need to take the derivative of that function, and y prime represents the derivative of the inside function. So in the following example, we're going to practice differentiating expressions that include the dependent variable y, where y is a function of x. So example one, implicit differentiation, assume that y is a function of x, and differentiate the following expressions. So each of these problems, we're going to let y be a function, where we don't know what the function is, but it's a function of x, and x is the independent variable. So number one, what's the derivative with respect to x of y cubed? Now we don't know what y is, but we know it's a function. So the derivative of y cubed, the derivative of the outside function is 3y squared. But since y is a function, you need to take the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule. 
So multiply by the derivative with respect to x, so d dx of y. And so 3y squared is the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of the inside function would be dy dx. Or if you want to replace dy dx with prime notation, it would be 3y squared times y prime. So that was using the power rule, but more importantly, it was using the chain rule because y is a function and it's representing the inside function. Number two, what's the derivative with respect to x of x cubed times y squared? So x cubed is a function of x. Well, y is a function of x. So y squared is also a function of x. So you have a product of two different functions here. So you need to use the product rule and you'll also have to use the power rule when you take the derivative of x cubed and also y squared. So set up the derivative using the product rule. Product rule said first function stays the same, so x cubed times the derivative with respect to x, so d dx of the second function, y squared, plus the second function unchanged times the derivative of the first function, so d dx of x cubed. Now take the derivative of the first and derivative of the second. So the first function stays the same. So what's the derivative of y squared? y squared is a composite function because y is a function and it's also being squared. So the derivative of the outside function is 2y, and now you have to take the derivative of the inside function. So derivative with respect to x of just y representing the inside function plus, because it's the product rule, y squared is unchanged and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And so we still have one more derivative defined and it's from the chain rule. You have x cubed times 2y, so that's 2x cubed y times the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx plus 3x squared y squared is the other term. And so you can have your answer written as 2x cubed y times dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, plus 3x squared y squared, or you can replace the dy dx with y prime. So 2x cubed y times y prime plus 3x squared y squared. All right, number three. This time, take the derivative with respect to x of natural log of y. So this is definitely a composite function because natural log is the outside function and y is the inside function, and the variable is x. So you need to take the derivative of the logarithmic function, and then you also need to use the chain rule. So what's the derivative of the natural log of y? It's 1 over the argument. So the argument in this case is the y inside the logarithm function. So 1 divided by y times the derivative of the inside function. So derivative with respect to x of the inside function in this case is y. And so it's 1 divided by y times dy dx, or using prime notation, it's 1 divided by y times y prime after you replace dy dx with the y prime. Let's try one more. Number four, take the derivative with respect to x of e to the power x times y. So notice you have an exponential function because it's base e, and in the exponent you have a product of two functions. You have x is a function of x, and y is also a function of x. So you need to use the product rule. And then you also have to use the chain rule because y is a function itself of x. So let's take the derivative of the outside function derivative of the outside function would be, what's the derivative of e to the xy power? It's an exponential function, so it's the same, so e to the xy power, times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is x times y, the exponent. And now notice that the exponent is a product, so you have to use the product rule now to take its derivative. So you have derivative with respect to x of the exponent, and so now use the product rule. You have e times xy already as the derivative of the outside function, times the quantity, it's the first function, which is x, times the derivative with respect to x of the second function, which in this case was y, plus the second function unchanged, times the derivative with respect to x of the first function, which is just x. So you have e to the xy power times x times the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx, plus, because it's the product rule, second function is y, what's the derivative of x? It's 1. So y times 1. So e to the xy power times the quantity x times dy dx plus y. Or if you replace dy dx with y prime, it would be e to the xy power times xy prime plus y. So now that we know how to differentiate expressions involving the dependent variable y as a function of x, we can now look at how to perform implicit differentiation where you actually take the derivative of an equation involving x's and y. And so the goal of using implicit differentiation is still to find the derivative. The derivative is represented as y prime, or it'd be y prime of x, because y is a function of x, or if you're using function notation, it'd be f prime of x. So here's implicit differentiation. The goal is to find the derivative. 
The derivative is represented as y prime, or dy dx, if you're using Leibniz notation. To determine the derivative, y prime, you need to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x while treating y as a function of x, just like we did in the previous example, and then algebraically solve for the derivative y prime. So let's see how this works with an example that we've talked about earlier in the video. Let's return to the implicit equation 3x squared plus y subtract 2 equals 0. We know that this is an implicit equation because y has not been solved for. And we're going to use implicit differentiation to find out what is the derivative of y prime. So example 2, implicit differentiation. Use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of this equation. 3x squared plus y subtract 2 equals 0. So notice you have an equation that involves x and y. And we're going to assume that y is representing a function of x. But we don't know what that function is. So before we use implicit differentiation, let's see, can you actually solve this equation for y and get an explicit equation? Because we can use all the differentiation rules that we've learned earlier in the course if it's an explicit equation. So take 3x squared plus y subtract 2 equals 0 and solve for y. So when you solve for y, you need to subtract 3x squared on both sides of the equation, and you also need to add 2 on both sides of the equation. And so you get y by itself is y equals negative 3x squared plus 2. So this is an equation that's explicitly defined in terms of x. So you can have this y replaced with y of x, or you can have this y replaced with f of x, or any function notation that you choose, because this is an explicit equation. Now we know how to find the derivative. y prime, if you're using prime notation, is the derivative, so d dx, of this expression, negative 3x squared plus 2. We can use the sum rule and the power rule to find its derivative. The derivative of negative 3x squared is negative 6x, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So we have y prime. y prime has been solved for. y prime is negative 6x. And so that's the derivative. So now we're going to talk about how do you use implicit differentiation to find the derivative if you don't solve for y, or if it's impossible to solve for y. So here's how implicit differentiation works. You take the equation, and now you take the derivative with respect to x as your variable on both sides of the implicit equation. So take the derivative of the left side of the equation with respect to x. d dx of the left side of the equation is 3x squared plus y subtract 2. Keep the equal sign. And now take the derivative with respect to x on the right side of the equation. So derivative of 0. Now when you take the derivative, we're going to do it just like we did in the previous example. The x is the variable and y is a function of x. So whenever you take the derivative of y, you also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is y prime. So what's the derivative of 3x squared? It's 6x. It does not involve y, so it's just like normal differentiation. Well, we have a y here. How do you take the derivative of y? The derivative of y is 1 times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the inside function is y prime. So 1 times y prime is y prime. And the derivative of negative 2 is 0. And now take the derivative of the other side of the equation. The derivative of 0 is also 0. So you get the equation 6x plus y prime plus 0 equals 0. And now the goal is still the same. We want to find the derivative. The derivative is this y prime. So we need to get y prime by itself. So solve the equation for y prime. So take the equation, 6x plus y prime equals 0, and now subtract 6x on both sides of the equation. So y prime on the left side of the equation is equal to negative 6x. And so notice that you get the same answer. If you're able to solve for y, it's easier to take the derivative. So y prime is negative 6x. But let's say you can't solve the equation for y. Then you must use implicit differentiation where you treat y as a function of x. But you still get the same answer, which is very important. You want to make sure that you have the same derivative no matter what method you use. So notice that these two give you the same result. If you start with the equation 3x squared plus y subtract 2 equals 0, if you were able to solve for y, it makes the differentiation much easier. So if you solve for y, you get y equals 2 minus 3x squared. And now you can take the derivative using the power rule and the sum rule. So if you differentiate this explicit equation, because y has been solved for, you get y prime is negative 6x. But if you don't solve the equation for y, or maybe it's impossible to solve the equation for y, then you must use implicit differentiation. So the question is, why are we so interested in using implicit differentiation? Can we not solve an equation for y in terms of x and then differentiate using the rules that we had before? The important reason of using implicit differentiation is that not all equations can be solved for y. There are some equations that may be impossible to get y by itself. And so there is no way to get y 
explicitly in terms of x. So you have to use implicit differentiation. So keep in mind that there are many equations that are either difficult or impossible to solve for y explicitly in terms of x, which means that you can't avoid implicit differentiation. If you can't get y by itself and have an explicit equation, y in terms of x, then you have to use implicit differentiation, and the goal is still the same. You want to find the derivative of y prime. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we've talked about how to differentiate expressions that both contain x and y, and where we treat y as a function of x, and how to use implicit differentiation where you have an equation that contains both x and y. You don't want to solve the equation for y, or maybe it's impossible to solve the equation for y. Then you need to find the derivative of y prime using implicit differentiation. So if you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about how to use implicit differentiation to find the slope of a tangent line.